Hey everyone, I'm Alex, and welcome to this Marvel Snap Beginner's Guide on one of the best beginner decks in Marvel Snap, the Kazoo deck. And in this guide, I'm going to be taking you through this beginner deck, every one of its parts, every one of its cards, and I'm going to be telling you exactly why these cards function the way they do, how they synergize together, and at the end of this, I'm actually going to include about five gameplay clips that also illustrate and teach you how to play the deck to great effectiveness because I'm playing a beginner deck late into pool three against people with almost complete collections and it's incredible how good this deck can be and so I think that there's a lot of important lessons in the gameplay as well but in the meantime let's get started and talk about the individual cards now we are playing a kazoo deck the idea is we are playing a deck that revolves around kazar and the idea of zooming out as far as you can. You're kind of contesting three lanes at once, spreading your power a little bit, and usually a lot of decks, like even like, you know, an Infinite Control deck, which is one of the other beginner decks that I talk about, you're only really contesting two. In this one, you contest three, and it starts with Ant-Man. Ant-Man's a 1-1, one, one, which is not all that impressive, but becomes a 1-4 when you have three other cards at that location. Now, Ant-Man is greatly at risk to someone like Killmonger, who will wipe out your entire board. Actually, this whole deck is super susceptible to Killmonger, so please be aware of that, uh, because they'll destroy one-cost units across the board, and that probably is going to be disadvantageous to you, while not so disadvantageous to the opposing team, uh, the opponent, sorry, who is playing a Killmonger in their deck. Squirrel Girl is great because Squirrel Girl basically puts uh, three units on board, basically the Squirrel Girl herself and then the squirrels uh, as well, which so you're going to have uh, a presence in each of the lane. It's very important with Squirrel Girl, I should mention, that when you throw the squirrels out, you're actually reducing your location size by one on each. So if you have any particular kind of combos you want to play, it's very important you be cognizant of how the lanes are structured because the squirrels will occupy and take out an entire slot across all the lanes. So you functionally are only playing on three slots on each lane when you're playing someone like like Squirrel Girl. And then you got Korg. Korg's funny because he's a he's a one cost two power, which is good enough, but in Marvel Snap, you only have a 12 card deck. And uh, one of the disadvantages of that is that, well, um, if you don't draw some of the major combo cards you need, because each card is so important, you can be stuck between a rock and a hard place, pun intended. And basically what the rock does is it dilutes the opposing deck, which is super valuable, helps disrupt your tempo. And the result is that Korg is a very high quality one drop at this stage in your Marvel Snap career. Then you have Nightcrawler and you have Angela. I'm going to talk about these two in conjunction with each other. Now, Angela is one of the best two drops in the game. It wouldn't be surprised me if she got nerfed a little bit, to be honest with you. Um, but uh, in the meantime, as of recording, this is what she does. She's a 2-1 that uh, every time you play a card there, she gains two additional power. Um, there is some counter synergy between Angela and Squirrel Girl because Squirrel Girl is going to occupy one of the lanes. And the problem with that is that uh, when that happens, you have one less proc on Angela. So usually you'd play the Squirrel Girl herself into the Angela so then you actually proc it as opposed to letting a Squirrel land uh, in Angela's lane without proccing the actual plus two. The other thing about the Angela is that uh, Nightcrawler is an excellent combo play. The reason for this is because when you play Nightcrawler on top of Angela, you proc her plus two, but then you can move Nightcrawler to another lane, freeing up a space for another card to be played on top of Angela again, maximizing her ability to get additional value. And then you have Armor. Now, Armor's probably the most important card in this deck, believe it or not. Despite the makeup of the deck, you're like, hey, Alex, there seems like there's a lot of important cards here, to be honest with you. Yeah, but the truth is that Armor's probably one of the most important because... A lot of people are going to be playing these Zoo-style decks. They are very prevalent at lower uh, brackets for beginners. And the result of that is that people are going to play Killmonger, and they're going to wipe your board. So you need to play Armor in conjunction where Ant-Man is, because you need to protect this four lane with four cards. Because if Ant-Man, Squirrel Girl, and whoever else is here gets wiped out, your game is basically over. So generally speaking, you want to play your Armor into the Ant-Man stage, because Armor is going to protect and prevent your cards from being destroyed. Scarlet Witch, as I discussed in my uh, location uh, series of guides, it's so important that you understand that as a new player, do not sleep on the... Uh the reasonable uh, ability for Scarlet Witch to correct lanes and specific locations. There's going to be locations that are super disadvantageous to you, and it's extremely important that you have some sort of correction for those situations. And if you have a lane correction that the opposing player does not, that location can be corrected to your advantage. Now, obviously, with Scarlet Witch, it's a very random location that happens, but you have the advantage of, well, this one sucks. A random one's probably better statistically. And that's generally what you find. Sometimes it's still Rexy anyway, but, you know. That's the roll of the dice. That's RNG. So what are you going to do? But Scarlet Witch is important. All these decks should have some sort of actual location correction. 
Wolfsbane is great here. Uh, she's a great card. I mean, uh, it's a 3-1 that can be up to a 3-7. Fantastic card. When played into a full lane with Angela, you're effectively playing 9 power on one turn, which is great for 3 power because Angela procs 2, and then if it's Wolfsbane is the last card, uh, she becomes a 3-7, so it's 9 total power. Uh, very good with Zudex, very good lane finisher, and overall just an absolutely excellent card at this stage in your career. Now we've got Captain America. Captain America is a good card because it is an ongoing effect that provides you with plus one power all the cards in your lane. And again, this combos very well with the Ant-Man armor lane. Uh, Captain America is going to benefit uh, those cards around, create more value in that lane while protecting them under the armor. That is the suggested place where you play Captain America. And then you have the three next cards. And these cards, it's very important that you play them together in one lane. So no matter what, you always have a lane with enough space for three additional cards whether that be basically one squirrel and no one else or whatever you have to have space for kazar blue marvel and onslaught to be played in conjunction with one another one after another turn four five and six let me explain why kazar your one cost cards get one additional power that's great you got squirrels you got uh you know ant-man you got core you got nightcrawler they all get one additional power awesome and with Onslaught, that becomes two additional power. Pretty solid. And then you got Blue Marvel as a 5-3. All your other cards get plus one power, including Kazar, and all the one drops that he's buffing. And what's interesting about that is when you play Onslaught, that's double to two. So now your one drops are, have a plus four power on them. Not to mention, you are playing pretty decent tempo cards. Kazar, Blue Marvel's weak on the tempo side, but Onslaught's just about right. And so if they don't really contest this third lane, you could very much win it with just three, these cards. Because remember, Blue Marvel is buffing Kazar and Onslaught, and it's being amplified by Onslaught itself. So you're going to get a lot of extra value. Like for instance, Onslaught comes down as a 6-9, as a six, nine, right? Which is pretty strong and uh, that's more or less how this deck works i think the biggest mistake new players make is that they'll uh they'll misplay the squirrel girl they'll play the squirrels in such a way that prevents them from playing kazar blue marvel and onslaught in the same deck or they'll play squirrel girl not into angela and let a squirrel just kind of pop into her lane and not give her the plus two so it's important you actually play squirrel girl into angela regardless if you have any questions at all please let me know down in the comments below myself or our community member would be happy to answer your questions and uh be sure to check out these twitch highlight videos we recorded them on twitch i'd love to see on Twitch. We have so much fun there. And uh, these gameplay videos really set an excellent example as to how this deck works to good effect, even against pool three decks and above. I hope you enjoy the clips. All right, playing a beginner deck into late pool three is a bit challenging. Guys have fully fledged collections and I'm playing cards that are only available in you know, <laughs> starter cards. <laughs> but I like a challenge. What can I say? I like the challenge. Um, so there's no way Fist Tower actually benefits us. Uh, so I'm willing to play this in a Fist Tower. I don't think he has a move deck. So he plays in the Hala here, Sunspot. We're not going to contest Hala because I think Sunspot can be problematic in that lane. But I am willing to play Captain America in with this armor here. That sucks. But ultimately, we just need... I mean, if we pull Kazar, we really don't have to worry about this at all. He plays Storm. And we can actually counter that with Scarlet Witch Ant-Man. But if we pull Kazar, I think I actually play Kazar here. Do I play Kazar there? I'm glad I didn't pull Kazar because I was not actually fully sold on what I was going to do. Because we don't have Kazar. I think ultimately what we do here is we do this... It's enough to contest this lane. He'd have to save mana. He can also move the Nightcrawler over. I'm willing to play into this location here. Like, uh, I don't even know how to say it, honestly. Like, Gulia? I don't know, man. So, he, he's got some he's got some resources there. We got the Korg. I'm willing to go Blue Marvel here. This is a tricky game, though. He commits all the way. Wait a minute. He's really committing to that middle lane. That is not what I expected at all. And now I do this, and I pretty much just win. I think I snap here. Oh, snap. I'm giving I'm giving mid, but I think he committed way too many resources there. This was misplayed on his behalf. And if I lose, I lose, but... I think this was misplayed. Onslaught's going to be an 8. Or actually a 9. 
So he plays a single card against Onslaught. He has to gap 12. It's Red Skull. So we actually win by one. Can you believe it? He plays Red Skull into the solo lane. And we actually end up winning by one for the four cubes. That was actually pretty clean. We never pulled Kazar. But that's the thing about this deck, right? I think we go pretty wide here. The Scarlet Witch allowed him to continuously play into this lane, which I did not expect him to do. Like Maximus playing into that lane. Yes, I understand you want to play Maximus into the Cosmo because the auto reveal is uh, nullified. But he overcommitted to the lane. This is a classic, classic mistake. We've got Oscorp Tower. Ain't nothing more useless than that. He's got the hood. Hopefully we pull our... Um, Hood's perfect in the Oscorp Tower. Scarlet Witch, perfect. I want to play more garbage there, honestly. I'd like for him to play more garbage there. You know what? I'll actually play Scarlet Witch here. I'll play Angela first, then we'll Scarlet Witch the Nightcrawler. He plays Nova and Demon. Okay, okay. He's really coming to that lane. Bar with no name, bar with no name. Anybody, anybody? Bar with no name. Strange Academy. Sad. Well... Scarlet Witch and Nightcrawler here. We have Kazar uh, and Onslaught. We're just missing our combination with um, with Blue Marvel here. Captain America doesn't quite work with it, obviously. Oh my god. We just got hard trolled by Atillion. Oh, not really. Okay, we lost Kazar. We got him, though. We commit to this lane here for a moment. It is the only tempo play we have. We move the Nightcrawler. Okay, good play. I like, okay, Venom deck, not bad. He's, it's very unlikely he really picks up on where this thing's going here. Gets a ton of value by that Nova. Sabertooth goes out too. Good play, dude. Good play, I like that. I can absolutely respect that play. So we have to turn five here. What I think we do here is we turn five into the middle lane. He's going to be swapped out of this lane here. If I keep him here, we end up here anyways. But I think I'm willing to wait this out for a moment. We do this. I am assuming he's going to play Zola here. Because the Venom Zola deck is pretty is pretty solid. It's a 16. It's going to get replicated into either of these two lanes. Which means we have to move Nightcrawler into this lane to win it. So we play Blue Marvel here. I don't think it's Red Skull. What? Not what I expected. He plays mid, so we kind of overcommitted mid. So he has to play, so we give this lane, we throw Nightcrawler here. Unfortunately, I think he plays here and just wins. He's not gonna play here. Nightcrawler goes there. If we Ant-Man, I think this is correct. Yeah, we go for it, but I think this is the right move. I think he plays right, he does play right. He plays zero into what? Typhoid Mary, okay. So he puts 13 up. I'm gonna be close to that. I'm actually, I didn't quite do the math in my head. I think we're gonna be just, just, sh no, we win. What am I talking about? That's a clean win, friends. Look at that, what kind of math was that? We just pumped out 19 power on turn six, not even using our onslaught. That's absolutely fantastic. I love that. Cause you got the blue Marvel, you got the Nightcrawler, you got Ant-Man, Captain America making it happen. And he tried to do something fancy. I mean, that's 13 power. He probably was assuming that 13 power would have been enough in that lane, but it's not. It's not. Oh, beautiful. I want to play Korg here. Korg's a nice opening play here. Hit him with a rock. You know he's going to love it. Can you smell what the rock is cooking? Hulk. I like the Hulk. We play Squirrel Girl in there. We can also get rid of the Gamma Lab. But it's okay. We do have Onslaught Blue Marvel, so we're starting to see pieces to our puzzle here. We do not have Shang-Chi or anything capable of dealing with this lane. Oscorp is going to get a squirrel. I think we hold him. I think we just play him. We don't have a turn four play yet. What are the chances he can play more than one card? He's going to take our, our squirrel, unfortunately. So he commits one card. Okay, so we, we have two sets of Hulks here. It's Killmonger. Actually destroys our hand. Now, I actually like this because it illustrates the main disadvantage to this deck. Killmonger will completely destroy you. He, he should have snapped. I think he played this wrong, honestly. He should have been snapping. Like, he snapped too late. He should have snapped prior turn. 
but this is a great example as to like how this particular deck can be hard countered and why playing it into pool three can be challenging. I mean, Killmonger's not even a pool three card, but this is a perfect example of how this deck is countered. I'm okay going mid with Ant-Man here. I don't want to go into Jotunheim here yet. Uh, we would need to go into that with Scarlet Witch. Okay, that is a little frustrating for us. We do want to zoo a little bit here, but I'm willing to go Angela into this right lane here. Okay, brings out the Nightcrawler. Pretty solid play on his part. Okay, plus five energy. Now we have an interesting choice to make here. We got eight energy. We do not want to play in Jotunheim yet. We ultimately, I believe, play Blue Marvel into the Nightcrawler. It's not as mana efficient as it could be. But I think that this is okay. We could theoretically save mana, but I want the Onslaught play to be a bit of a surprise. I don't want him to anticipate me playing Onslaught. So we also get to move the Nightcrawler over. Oh, Jubilee coming out. Hopefully he whiffs on it. It's Sunspot into Jessica Jones. Okay, so he's going to get value from the Jessica Jones, but this is going to be kind of difficult for him. So I think what we do here is we just get the full Wolfbane, pro uh, Wolfbane proc. We do not need to move Nightcrawler yet. So, I mean, she's going to do us some serious value here. It's going to help offset this Jessica Jones, and we're going to be at a pretty big advantage. Now, of course, he can run the Sunspot to kind of win that lane back. But we do have Blue Marvel. Like, we're well ahead here. He's going to get a pretty... So he's giving this lane, obviously. So he wants to give this lane, which is fine by me. We move over here. Just thinking here. We'll need one card in Jotunheim. We probably just throw Korg here and we throw the... No. So I think the actual correct play here is to completely zoo this location. Have him bait himself into Jotunheim and we drop this Onslaught and we get the double blue Marvel play while also proccing Angela. I'm expecting him... I'm expecting him to skip this turn. See, he does skip this turn because he wants to drop, uh, yeah. So he's skipping this turn because he's going to drop the, uh, the Infinite. Now the thing is though, so if I do my math here, if he drops Infinite, it's 20 here. This is going to be double to so an additional four. I'm actually short by one. This procs for the win though. He moves Nightcrawler over. He bring Oh, that was actually a play I didn't consider for a second. Avengers! Wait, Captain America? What? Why was it Captain America? Oh my gosh. Okay, so... Not what I expected. Clearly... Clearly he had Infinite because he wouldn't have skipped turn 5 if he did. However, he made a decision to play Captain America instead because why? All right, bestest pair. Oscorp Tower. Damn. I don't want to play there. I'll play here. Okay. Not quite what I wanted. No one's going to play here. But I kind of want to start zooming into that location. So he has nothing fancy. He doesn't have an Electro or anything to throw me on Oscorp. Colleen Wing hit that. Uh, he hits Invisible Woman. What? Why? Why would you? Usually use Colleen Wing with, with Swarm. Yikes. Yikes. I just play these guys out, unfortunately. He plays Lady Sif. What's he hit? Hits Death. Okay, so this is a hella deck. He's playing hella. He has Death out. And he has Invisible Woman out. We have Kazar and Blue Marvel. So we have our full combo here. I think I'm willing to snap. snap. We have our entire combo here. He has only one slot left on this location. With the full combo, it'll take him above. He can't play cards here. He plays Moon Knight. Oh man, that's bad for us. He just discarded his Hella though. Lol. Okay, we still have we still have uh, onslaught here. K 
Okay. He's gone. Yeah. So his Moon Knight, his Moon Knight hit his Hella. So this guy literally misplayed. He had a small hand. He gambled with Moon Knight, which discards a card from either from each player's hand. Uh, he hit my Blue Marvel, which is perfect, but he literally destroyed his deck by discarding his Hella. <laughs> oh my god. But we do have Kazar Blue Marvel. If we on reveal this Squirrel Girl, we could get destroyed by Killmonger. But I mean, we may as well meme while we can. He hoods. That's his pure value on his part, honestly. We got squirrels everywhere. Squirrels absolutely everywhere. Okay, we're gonna Ant-Man here. So we're gonna have to blue Marvel, Kazar, and Onslaught here, by the way. Oh, Daredevil, okay. Well, you're gonna see my blue Marvel play, I guess. The cards can't be out of here, not a big deal. Uh, we, As much as I wanna play Captain America, we actually have to play armor in that lane or else everything's a disaster. As much as I like Captain America in this case, it has to be armor. Because if we don't play armor, everything becomes a problem. He's clearly trying to destroy this lane too. Had I dropped that there, we'd have gotten more valuable. We need to protect this lane. So we Kazar here. He can commit to trying to win this. If he plays the demon, he does win this. Because of the Angela proc. I just want to draw Onslaught. This is going to be... If, if, okay, so I think this is Demon. It's going to be Demon here. It is Demon. So he gets the proc. Uh, he's actually short by one? How bad's my math? That is not what I expected. I expected him to actually win that. Uh, we have Onslaught. So we have our full combo here. It's Viper. Okay, that actually messed up our combo a little bit, which is fine. I still get to play, uh, I was going to say Onslaught, but I don't think I actually play Onslaught here. What I probably do is I do Captain America into the Wolf's Bane. Yeah, he's gone. So, the Viper play was cute because it prevented my combo with the Onslaught into the Blue Marvel. But Captain America, Wolf's Bane would have been way too much value here. It would have been a very straightforward win for us.